Hey everyone, and welcome to the much anticipated Kubeflow at home video. Now, for all of you who didn't watch my video on failures, please go back and watch that first. Because really, I set out about two, two and a half months ago to make you guys the ultimate Kubeflow at home video to help you run Kubeflow at home. And uh, my goal was to give you something simple that did not rely on your infrastructure, but would enable you to simply and easily set up some infrastructure that would not only allow you to train your models, but also would help with all the aspects of it from data collection to training to hyperparameter tuning and serving so that you could have your home server sitting there doing all these things for you and actually be able to use the models that you train because that's my goal. I want to train some and use them in my home automation. That being said, I absolutely failed to do it. This doesn't mean I've stopped trying, nor that I have nothing to share. It just means that what I attempted to do didn't work. And I'm about to step you through everything I did. Not only do I want you to learn from what I have done, but I also want you to tell me ideas to try because honestly, right now, there's only a few ways forward that I see, but hopefully you guys can let me know of some other things I should be trying to do. And maybe some of you have ran, run into this same issue and can help me out. So why is Kubeflow at home so hard? Well, it comes down to a lot of facts that not only does it require Kubernetes, but it also Kubeflow on top of that, something that is designed as a set of microservices and has a lot of cloud tech debt, meaning it's kind of designed to be run in a large Kubernetes cluster in the cloud. Uh, so not only are you deploying Kubeflow, but you are also deploying Kubernetes with ingress like Istio. Actually, it has to have Istio as a service mesh and so much more. There's a database and uh, the list goes on. This being said, when you're installing it at home, it becomes a bit much. Previously, I was doing this with KubeADM on a bare metal Kubernetes cluster and manually installing Kubeflow with the command line um, tool all on top of that manually set up. And this setup was pretty specific to me and I found a lot of you guys had a hard time following along with that. That being said, I set out to fix this because I wanted to do more with machine learning and I wanted people to be able to follow along with me without a master's degree in Kubernetes or Kubeflow or storage classes in Kubernetes. Uh, I set out in my original video with kind of five criteria uh, I was going to use to install this. So the, the very first criteria was installability. Was it easy to install? Could you install it on the hardware you wanted without doing a lot of different configuration? Does it support uh, running in a VM um, or running in bare metal? And was the documentation uh, or was the installation documentation documentation uh, well written and easy to follow. Then comes usability. What, did it provide all the features that we want, uh, whether that's the GPUs uh, or uh, training and hyperparameter training, notebook sharing. These are all of the things that Kubeflow brings and if it left one out, uh, that just wouldn't be very good. And does it work on all OSs? I know I use the superior uh, OS Linux, but some of you guys might be following along on Mac or Windows, and I want it to work on those. Then the next bit of criteria was maintainability. How easy is it to not only install, but maintain and update? Because not only do you have a Kubernetes and Istio to update, but you also have Kubeflow on top of that to update. Um, and I know this is somewhat subjective, as it's kind of a new project and anything I covered is newer, so I just am making my best guess as to how uh, maintainable it is. Um, all right, and you know, in this maintainability, does running it on different hardware like Mac or Windows really make it any less maintainable or more difficult to install? And does it provide Kubeflow as a, an appliance so we don't have to update Kubeflow when it gets an update? Does it do this for Kubernetes, Kubeflow, and all of the things? I kind of want it as a single app.
And the very last piece of criteria was learnability. Does it provide you with everything you need to learn that platform? I don't want my videos to be the only thing out there. I want to be able to link documentation to you guys. So if you get stuck, you're, you're going to have more than just me to help you out. Uh, this has some uh, overlap with some of the other ones, but that is a lot of what I was looking for when I set out to make my original video on Kubeflow. I wanted you guys to be able to follow along with me. Now, as a stretch goal, I also was looking for how easy would it be to do an enterprise edge mode? Um, but you know what? I've kind of scrapped that for right now because I will dig into that a little bit later because I'm probably actually looking to run Kubeflow as an edge. Let's talk about the technologies that I checked out. And the very first one, obviously, is how I had been running it with KubeADM, with Kubeflow installed manually on top of that, managing all the storage classes, networking, and Istio myself. This obviously has so many problems that we've already covered. It's kind of germane to my hardware. It's really difficult. You have to update your Kubernetes cluster yourself with KubeADM. You have to set it up yourself with KubeADM. And pretty much, while it's not Kubernetes the hardest way, it is the next best thing to Kubernetes the hardest way. And this is just not great when really, I wanna be showing you guys content about machine learning and not how to reset up your cluster when Kubeflow wrecks it. The next piece of technology that I went with was trying to, I tried to remove the Kubernetes part. And so I instinctively went to Kind and Minikube because those are my easy, lightweight Kubernetes uh, instances that would manage Kubernetes for you. And both of these work really well. My problem was is that there was no built-in Kubeflow integration, so it didn't really bring a whole lot with the Kubeflow. You had to manage Kubeflow on top of it as a cluster. And Kind actually was even worse because Kind isn't really meant to stick around for a long time. And on top of that, Minikube brings its own problems because you can run it in VM, you can run it in Docker, and so how you run it is actually important on which features it gets. And so it all was not what I thought was the best. Now, you can run Kubeflow on Minikube. And I actually have a video on doing that. And I can make a new video on doing it that way. But it just is a little bit more difficult and requires a lot of manual steps. So I moved on from there. And this is where uh, KF5i and K3s comes in. So K3s, as I'm sure a lot of you already know, is Rancher's lightweight uh, Kubernetes compliant Kubernetes. Um, and it replaces a lot of things and runs really lightweight. And I was really excited about KF5i because this is how Rancher runs Rancher. If you've ever run Rancher in a container, it's not necessarily a production ready way, but Rancher runs in a Kubernetes cluster, and this is empowered by K3S. And so you can run Rancher in a container because of this. And I thought possibly somebody had done this for K3S. K KF5i looks to be really cool, and I, I was excited about it, and I'm excited to continue following it. That being said, it was really rough. It was buggy. It didn't really work. I actually never got Kubeflow running. I got some of the other stuff. It's cool and it looks to solve more than just the Kubeflow. It's kind of your one-stop shop for Kubernetes. And I really hope that SUSE, the company behind it, actually puts more work into it and actually designates a team to moving that forward because it looks really cool. It just is really rough right now. So I moved on because obviously that isn't going to work if it's not even working. So yeah, moved on. And that brings us to our last two technologies. That is uh, Ubuntu's MicroKates and uh, a project called MiniKubeflow. Now, MicroKates and MiniKubeflow are two fantastic options. And if you're looking into this, I suggest looking at both of these. Now, they both fell short for 
two different, very different reasons. So let's let's dig into it. Mini Kubeflow checks all the boxes that I set out to to check. I, it was easy to install. It was easy to serve. They have really great documentation. So um, a crypto or I don't a critio, not sure how to pronounce their name, did a really fantastic job on Mini KF. The really big core problem with Mini KF is it runs in Vagrant. And if you don't know what Vagrant is, Vagrant is a kind of a virtual machine dev box thing. But my biggest problem with Vagrant is that it actually runs on VirtualBox. If, if Vagrant was updated to work off of Multipass instead of Vagrant, it would probably be one of my favorite tools. Why so much hate on VirtualBox? I know I don't generally hate, I really do dislike VirtualBox. One of the biggest problems with VirtualBox, other than it's slow compared to everything else, is that it requires you to turn off your CPU and motherboard uh, multi-threading and virtualization, which means you can't run any other virtualization text uh, technology like KVM on that machine. So it would basically limit that to running a single diff a single VM um, as everything else I run is multi-pass or uh, KVM. I mean, it's multi-pass with KVM. Multi-pass doesn't really care, matter, it's KVM. This actually really sucks for a couple reasons. One, I was hoping not to run it in a VM. Uh, one of the reasons I don't want to run it in a VM, I want it to be able to be run in a VM, but I don't want to actually straight up run it in a VM because if you run Kubeflow or anything in a VM and you want to share a GPU, it actually requires an extra GPU because the host OS has to maintain a v GPU. So you can't just have a single GPU and so this would require you to have two GPUs, and this isn't something I wanted to wish on you guys. It's not even something I have, and GPUs are in short supply. So I didn't really want you to have to run it in a VM, which this has to run in a VM. And I didn't really, I really don't want to use Vagrant. Like, it's not a technology I want to use. <sighs> so this is my biggest problem with uh, mini KF. And I thought about actually running a KVM VM and running Vagrant in that, but then you're running virtualization in virtualization and you can do it, but it's not great. And you, you still have the problem with your GPUs. And so I, I kind of left the mini KF. Hopefully they update this sometime to run in KVM. That would at least be better, still require a VM but that would be acceptable. My real wish is that they would put this on K3D or K3S and let me run it as a container. So if a Critio or whatever you pronounce your name or however you pronounce your name, if you'd like to do that and want my help, I would actually be more than willing to help you out doing that because uh, I really think that would be the way to do this. But there was one other technology, so not all hope has been lost yet. There is the MicroKates, and this is a Kubernetes cluster technology made by Ubuntu. And in general, I don't actually like it for Kubernetes for a couple of reasons, but it's not bad. I just, it's not my favorite. It's not what I, my go-to. It kind of hits this odd spot where I wouldn't use it in production things, but I wouldn't use it in dev because it's more difficult. So anyways, it's kind of a weird thing. But what it does do is it brings this concept of plugins. And plugins allow you to basically install things as an appliance, which is actually really cool. They have a Kubeflow plugin, which allows me to just uh, microcates enable Kubeflow. And installing microcates is maybe one of the easiest things you're going to do. Pseudo snap install microcates dash dash classic. That's it. I think it's dash dash classic. It probably is. I, I don't remember. It's two lines on the terminal, two command lines, and you have a Kubeflow install. This is fantastic. This is what I was making my original video about, letting you guys know it was super awesome and super fantastic. So what's my deal breaking problem with it? Why did I scrap that entire plan, go back to the drawing board, and in the end just not make a video? <sighs> well, it's because you can only access it on the machine you created it on. You literally can only access it from the machine you created it on. And I'm not even sure how or why they're doing this, 
Or maybe they're not doing this and inherently somehow that with how they're deploying it causes this. But the only way you can access it from a remote machine that I found was a SOX proxy, which uh, a SOX proxy is not uh, inherently horrible or anything. But one of the problems it does do is if you do it on your laptop like I did to my r remote CPU or my remote server, the problem comes is that in the end, if you can't reach that server, then your laptop loses internet because it's trying to reach, it's trying to proxy all your requests. And then we can get into a complicated HA proxy with a SOX proxy uh, type of setup, but then we're back to a really complicated setup. And this was not my goal. My goal was easy and simple and not germane to my own hardware. So this actually made microcates unusable for this. I, now, if you guys have a way to fix it, I am all ears because this was so easy and so perfect. It allowed you to share GPUs. It did everything. And I tried a lot of things to make it work. I even tried setting up Metal LB on the microcates. So they have, you can enable Metal LB on it and have load balance in your cluster. Microcates is kind of cool that way. But when I configured Metal LB and I got Metal LB working for me and then enabled the load or enabled Kubeflow, then Kubeflow rewrote the Metal LB so it was still this internal proxying thing. And I just never could get it to work. I am begging any of you, if you know how to fix it, please let me know because I would love it. Now, is all hope lost? Absolutely not. I, I don't think so. Once I get the time, I'm going to look into a Juju Charm deployment on Ubuntu. It looks promising and looks to be what is powering the MicroKates uh, installation. So it really looks like it shares a lot of the same stuff. And so it should be simple, not as simple, not as simple as what we were going to have, but I'm going to try that out. I'm also going to continue trying some stuff with MicroKates because it was so simple. I just would love to get it working. And if you guys want to try it, go ahead, try microcates and try to expose it to another machine and let me know if I'm just crazy and it's actually really easy. I think that's why in the end I never released it because I thought that I must be missing something so stupid and simple, and I might be, that I'm just not seeing on how to expose this to another machine without doing some really, really crazy things. So. In the end, I'm still looking into the best way to run Kubeflow at home, but I can give you these recommendations at this point. Now, I do want a special word right here, right in the middle of this, is if you're doing this in the cloud, there's actually a really cool project that I really like. Now, it's very cloud oriented, so it doesn't work for our current needs and not what this video is about. But there is an Argo flow, which is a install for Kubeflow, but with Argo CD. And it looks fantastic. I actually might, if I get the spare time, help out with it. The guys look really interesting. They're doing some cool things there. And uh, I'd love to interview you if you watch this show. But it's definitely worth checking out if you're deploying to the cloud. But it's very much germane to the cloud. So that's not really this. Now, let's get back to what are my recommendations at this point? If you don't care about CPU virtualization or you already use Vagrant for whatever reason, then MiniQ, MiniKF is awesome and is the tool for you. Now, if you're just wanting to run on your own desktop and you don't need to access it from something else, Microcates is fantastic and awesome. To be honest, I have been messing with Microcates as they say people would use this in production. And if they say people could use this in production, I don't understand how you would have a requirement on a SOX proxy. I, I honestly just don't get that. So I'm sure that I'm missing something stupid, hopefully. In the end, I am still working on it and hopefully I can figure something out this year that is simple and easy to use. Please, again, comment down below if you have anything that you think I should try. If you've come across this problem and have a solution for it, I will thumbs up that faster than, I don't know, faster than 
I've probably done something stupid, and this is my rubber ducking to you guys, and hopefully you guys can come up with something better for me and help me come to a ultimate solution for all of us. Okay, so if you like this video and would like to eventually know an excellent home setup for machine learning, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you did not like this video and don't really wanna know anything more about Kubeflow, go ahead, hit that subscribe button, stick around, and see if these videos get any better for science.